so let's get down to my favorite stove here. This one I bought quite a while ago. This is called the Coleman Exponent, and I don't even think they make this anything more anymore. Uh, I think it's a triple fuel. Uh, I think you can technically run uh, unleaded gasoline inside of this. <laughs> I've never would and would not try that. Uh, I do run this Coleman, this white gas basically, I guess. Uh, very good fuel. Uh, that's what I do run in it. This one also had a burner that came with it that would allow you to run kerosene, which I've never run inside of here, but that's nice that you could. Uh, so basically, has a little, basically a little bowl. Has a little fill reservoir here. You just fill that up until pretty much up right to the top is okay. And then um, around here, that's where the action happens. This is the dial to control the flow. And then this is the pump. You basically put your finger over it. You kind of twist it shut. And then you pump it down while holding your finger over it. It's not going to work, obviously, because this is open. but You'd hold your finger down while this is twisted all the way to that closed position, and you would pump it up like that. Anyway, so that's how that works. Very convenient, very easy. It actually does have a fair bit of adjustability. Uh, there are a couple scary things about this. Um, when you first light it and it's cold, you have to let a little bit of fluid just basically dribble out to here and light it. And that'll produce a flame up to about here at least, you know, maybe a foot, foot and a half flame. Um, so you need to be prepared for that and not have anything flammable overhead you know, when you light this thing. That warms all of this up, it dies down, and then it goes to like a, almost like a little jet. Basically the fuel is coming out as a little jet through all these little holes around here. As you've, uh, you close this up obviously when you're done filling and pressurize it, and it's like... Uh, a little super soaker and these are like little fuel injection nozzles and it basically end up with something very close to a burner on your stove. This does a fantastic job of boiling water. Uh, it's very efficient. This thing says on high it'll burn for 1.38 hours and I have no reason to believe that that's incorrect. I might even say it might even be longer than that because I would cook a breakfast and then boil water for a shower and there would still be fuel left and it would take a while to boil five gallons of water up to a nice warm shower temperature anyway this has got to be my favorite uh... if i have a choice uh... this is almost uh... these are all going to be along the lines of um, car camping uh... not backpacking this would be the closest one that you could actually use as a backpacking stove uh... it is a little bit on the heavy side uh, but it's very high quality, has little fold-out legs on the bottom here. This little piece of plastic around here that tapers is actually an adjustment, so if you're not on level ground, it actually will make one of the legs move, and it'll actually allow some adjustment for sitting on the side of a hill, which is really a cool feature. And that's actually a very ingenious way to do it, it's just a little, basically a little band of plastic that gets thicker, and that pushes a leg down. <laughs> really ingenious anyway this is my favorite stove hands down lasts a long time I travel with this basically and that and that'll last uh, easily a four day weekend of camping using it every day and I would say you could probably leave you know maybe you had this filled and then you left with you could probably leave with as little as maybe that much left in the can and still have a four day weekend of camping uh, cooking for one person. So what do I do with this? I just cook a simple meals and then heat up shower water most importantly. That's mostly what I would use this for is warming up water. Anyway, so the reason I cannot take this with me to Northwest World Reggae Festival this year is because they do not allow an open flame like that. It's a fire hazard. So I will have to bring uh, more of a propane barbecue kind of a, a cooking arrangement. So I will say I also have, they actually show a picture of it right here. I purchased this one a long time ago and I used it. And it's nice, super efficient. This guy right here, it kind of just connects on and then you pressurize this little tank. 
and it has two burners, but the problem I'll say with this guy here, unless I was using it incorrectly, does not put out nearly as much heat as this little guy right here. Uh, this one will boil water incredibly quickly. This one I had to be very, very, very patient and wait a very long time to it warmed up my water, which was okay. I had some nice camp mates that year and it was a nice chance to talk with everybody while I'm warming up my shower water. Uh, but anyway, this one right here, I can understand why they moved away from that. It is a very nice system, uh, very simple, also pretty efficient. Um, doesn't put out a lot of heat, Very uh, clearly doesn't use a lot of fuel. Uh, but anyway, this one, not as effective as this guy here. This one is actually like a burner on your stove at home. Really incredible the amount of heat this guy will put out. So they do have a dual fuel Coleman. I don't believe the exponent is available anymore, but they still offer a dual fuel. I would recommend you pick it up. It's a great little stove. I would use this thing for um, quite a long time. You see how it's uh, very carbon, got a lot of carbon built up. Uh, boiling water, you know, for almost 40 minutes at a time. Gets super hot, but never had any problems with any uh, safety issues. I love this stove. If I was allowed to have an open flame, this would be what I would be bringing up to Northwest World Reggae Festival this year, but I will show you my option that I will have to bring up for uh, not having an open flame. Right, what you see here is what I will be bringing with me to Northwest World Reggae Festival this year to do my cooking and warming up my shower water. So what I've done is this has a regulator on the back over here and I've gone ahead and connected uh, what's called like a, I believe a bulk tank hose. This one's made by Mr. Heater. Uh, maybe I'll include a link to uh, purchase this. I got mine at Walmart. You don't have to buy it online. Um, pretty cool. I like getting the ones that have this style right here because they're very quick to connect. Uh, there's other ones that you almost have to use. Uh, anyway, like a thread sealing tape. But this one right here just spins right on. No worries, real fast. So I'll bring a bulk, a bulk tank with me because that way I don't want to have to go through a six pack or more of bottles. This one has a simple uh, little lock right here that would lock it down for travel. Lift up. There's a little hole at the back here for lighting, so I'll just stick through a lighter and light it. It doesn't have um, push button ignition. Uh, the first one I had that I used to take camping with me, my first uh, Reggae on the Rivers, um, I think it was made by Blue Rhino. That thing was pretty big. I want to say, you know, looking at the handle over here, it easily came out. Just a ton. It was a big guy. Um, that was almost too much. It took up most of the trunk and then uh, just to bring my cooking with me. But I would actually cook a really nice breakfast and I'd bring uh, hamburgers and do do hamburgers and stuff. And that worked out really well. Used that a bunch of years. I used that as my home barbecue too. And so much that um, you know all the marinades dripping through, I actually rusted through the bottom of it over time. <laughs> so I had to retire it. <laughs> So the one thing, I went on the lower end because I wanted something really small. I have pretty small hands, but you can see that this guy is not a big barbecue at all. Uh, probably, I don't know, 17 inches maybe at the most from the handle to the handle probably. Um, but really nice. Uh, what do I like about it? It's got the diffuser panel right here, which means um, you can cook things and not burn the crap out of them. Uh, it does appear to have a pretty good temperature control, although the one thing this barbecue is missing over my old um, Blue Rhino is the Blue Rhino had a nice temperature gauge here. So I might think about upgrading, although <laughs> it adds so much to the cost of the barbecue to, that I might just go ahead and, you know, wing it. Uh, but you can drill a hole and add a temperature gauge of your own onto any barbecue, but you're going to end up spending probably 20 bucks or you know, somewhere around there for the temperature gauge. And that's going to raise the price of your barbecue up. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to bring. Uh, it's plenty big. I'm going to bring a little pot of water. Uh, so I'll boil a pot of water on here. I'll be able to do some simple barbecuing. Kind of trying to formulate a strategy for this year's uh, reggae. Um, not going to have a lot of room to bring up a bunch of food. Uh, this guy's going to take up a lot of room. I'm going to show you my bed. I have a bad back, as I've kind of mentioned before, and so uh, to go camping for four days, I actually bring a pretty nice bed setup. I might do a whole separate video about, so you got a bad back, you can still go to a music festival. <laughs>
but what do you need to do to uh, put together a bed that feels almost as comfortable as a real bed out in the woods? Uh, anyway, we're getting off subject here. This is what I'm going to bring. Uh, this is going to work out just fine. I've already done some uh, kind of warming it up. This is the uh, product of uh, too many years of materialism. What do I mean by that is uh, every birthday, every Father's Day, all of that, for years the family used to feel obligated to do cards and gift cards and this and that. Uh, so this is the result of a birthday and asking for gift cards for Home Depot. <laughs> So anyway, we've gotten away from that finally, that we no longer do adult, adult gifts. So if that's something you want to try with your family, try floating that, that the adults no, no longer need more junk. <laughs> and uh, maybe for birthdays and holidays, you no longer give uh, adult gifts at all. So anyway, this was the last birthday that we probably did uh, adult gifts for everybody. And this was my gift to myself uh, from the family. Um, anyway... So I haven't used it too much. This will be the first year it's going out camping. I've had it for quite a few years, but like I said, this is not my favorite. I have been bringing the other dual fuel because that, that is just the coolest stove I've found and most compact and most, most versatile. Um, I've gotten away from doing barbecuing, but we'll see how this works out. I'm going to maybe bring up a couple hamburger patties, uh, do a little bit of barbecuing, definitely going to do breakfast. You know, it's easy enough to do breakfast. A lot of places like music festivals don't necessarily have a good breakfast option. So I'll definitely be doing uh, eggs. And it's real easy uh, to cook uh, barbecue. <laughs> barbecue your breakfast. What I do is I get some aluminum foil and you fold it up and you make kind of like a little dish out of the foil. Usually spray that down with some uh, oil or rub it down with oil, not on the barbecue, not near the flame. You don't want to have this blow up in your face with oil. But you put a kind of a coated aluminum foil, crack eggs into that, close it up. It does a real great job. It almost, um, uh, along the lines almost of um, poaching them is how they come out. Uh, then the dump those out. Before I'll start the eggs, though, I'll usually like to do uh, those little hash brown patties that you can buy. Uh, and you'll have to find the right ones that crisp up real nicely. But barbecues actually are perfect for doing those. Again, so I didn't, don't end up with a mess here, I'll lay down some aluminum foil. I'll oil it, lay the hash brown patty on that, close it up, and you'll be amazed, actually. You're going to come out with really crispy hash brown patties. So I do the hash brown patties first. Once those are ready, um, you know, when they're you know, just about done, Start your eggs, and then everything will be nice and warm. You can also, uh, no reason you couldn't do toast on here too. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to barbecue actually here. And then there again, you could just have a little aluminum foil down, and you're just using this as a almost like a skillet. So anyway, there's no reason you can't barbecue uh, breakfast real easily. <laughs> you don't need a separate stove. All right, so that's going to be what I'm actually bringing this year for... Uh, for cooking and maybe we'll uh, cut the video here and then we will go to uh, what my strategy will be probably for like the kind of foods I'll bring and that's just from a decade of bringing the right kind of foods the wrong kind of foods wasting foods having foods get tainted in the cooler all kinds of weird stuff that happens over the years anyway we'll come back to it with a little bit more about cooking for going uh, car camping or going to a music festival